Postmaster General Louis DeJoy was testifying before the House Oversight Committee today. And there's no question that today's testimony got a little more spicy than what we've seen before. Members of the House were much more tough on DeJoy. And a good example of that was the line of questioning that we heard from Katie Porter. Let's watch. Mr. DeJoy, thank you for being with us today. What is the cost of a first class postage stamp? 55 cents. What about to mail a postcard? I don't I don't know, ma'am. You don't know the cost to mail a postcard? <laughs> I don't. I'll submit that I know uh, very little about a postage stamp. Do you know about within a million or so, can you tell me how many people voted by mail in the last presidential election? No, I cannot. To the nearest 10 million? I will Is be, that a no, I, Mr. DeJoy? I would be guessing, and I don't want to guess. Later, Katie Porter asked if the inspector general finds that there is a severe conflict of interest with DeJoy you know, serving as postmaster general, would, would he step down? And he essentially said no. He doesn't see why he would need to. Um, and by the way, Ida, I mean, that, that video didn't surprise me at all because we already know that during Louis DeJoy's confirmation hearing for Postmaster General, um, he needed help to get through answering very basic questions about the post office. He has no expertise in the post office. The only thing he knows about it is that uh, the companies that he has a vested interest in would love to see the post office destroyed because they want to destroy competition um, to increase their profits. And remember, again, Louis DeJoy does have conflicts of interest because he's invested in those companies, in those competitors. And yeah, I mean, th this is such an enlightening moment because, you know, on one hand, you have this man deny that he's single-handedly dismantling the post office before an election where there's gonna be a giant influx of mail-in ballots. But then the way he answers the very specific questions that are asked of him makes it abundantly clear that he's trying to dismantle the post office for political reasons, political and also financial reasons. That's right. You know what's interesting to me is that when you look at all of the people who are destroying this country, they all look alike. They all have something in common in, dem in, in that the gender, the race, um, the you know sexual preference, heterose uh, heterosexual, straight white males, and you know if, when people when we talk about these things, people think that it's a feminism agenda that wants to take the man down, or that people of color want to take people of color down. I am sure that there are. Uh, thousands and thousands of white young men in this country that come from humble beginnings that would be efficient at commit at, at doing these types of jobs. There, but this is a group of people that belong to this elite group based on being grandfathered in into these positions of power. And they all look the same and they all have been in power so long that they, they're constantly throwing temper tantrums. And they're quite mediocre because I guarantee you that if anybody, any one of us were the Postmaster, general, the the pipe piper, whatever you want to call them, we would have, we would know every inch of our business, and we would have to, because especially you and I as women, we would have to be twice as good at the job, three mm. times competent to be able to hold that position. And we would not be able to afford to not be able to answer a question because it would be an aha moment for whoever was cross-examining us. But when you look at these people, they are this, they're all in this. Criminal gang, right? You want to point at Bloods and Crips and MS-13, people who are starving for scraps and resorting to crime as a result of their survival. But you look at this gang and what are they doing? They think it's laughable that they don't, they're uninformed, they're un, they're disconnected with the population. They don't they don't know anything about what's going on in real life for us because they're unaffected. Look at this smug guy. This is what <laughs> they call you smug. They call jank smug. That's smug. This man does not know what is going on in his place of business. And any person who belongs to any marginalized group who cannot afford not to know any any part of where they work. And I just think it is a great, this is a moment in history where it's all, we're now starting to see the faces of all of the people who have been running us into the ground for, for profit and benefit. 
You're, you're so right. You know what people like Louis DeJoy and Donald Trump and every single member of Trump's family remind me of? The kinds of people who go to like a Kroger or any type of grocery store where they have a section dedicated to like nuts and candy that you can buy by the pound, right? And like they show up and they're like, oh, that's for me. And they just like rate it. They're just like snacking on the nuts and the candy and they think they don't, you know, they think that it's theirs to raid. It's their personal stash of nuts and candy while the rest of us have to work real hard to have the means to buy the nuts and candy. Like I know it sounds like a ridiculous analogy, but it's the sense of entitlement, right? Where they don't care about doing the moral thing or the ethical thing. They don't care about the general public. They see opportunities to raid resources for their own personal enrichment and their own personal wealth. And we have seen that happen. Time and time again, it's certainly more pronounced in the Trump era because Donald Trump doesn't try to hide it. Like he's so, he's the least sophisticated person on the planet. And so he doesn't have the ability to, you know, hide the terrible corruption and thievery he gets involved in. Same goes for the people that he, you know, helps to push into positions of power within the federal government. And so you see it happening before your very eyes. The frustrating thing is to hear Republican lawmakers consistently gaslight you and make you think that you're not seeing or try to make you think you're not seeing what your own two eyes are seeing. Now, luckily, there were some very, very strong Democrats who asked some pretty tough questions during this hearing. One of them was Ro Khanna, And so I want to take a look at those highlights. Our Defense Department, we don't tell them you have to go sell weapons to make revenue to serve the American people. We don't say that about our health service or the National Institute of Health. Why should we have a different standard for the Postal Service? Why do you have to go make a profit instead of just serving the American people? Sir, it's an interesting and good question. And, um, uh, and it's not that we need to make a profit. Uh, it's to be self-sustaining, which means cover, cover, at least cover your costs. But, but why? It's such a small... I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm not a legislator. I'm the postmaster. Do you, General. Do you know, I mean, do you know the history? Do you remember the time in the Postal Service history where that wasn't a requirement? I do, in the 70s. Actually, it was from 1840 yeah. to 1970. We funded the Postal Service. We didn't require them to make a profit because we thought people should in rural America and other places and our veterans should serve. And one of the reasons people serve in the Postal Service who've served in our military is they view it as public service. I mean, does, does Louis DeJoy know anything about the post office? Like anything at all? And, um, and Ida, he's right. Uh, Ro Khanna, of course, is, is the one who's right in this conversation because the post office is a government agency. And the fact that it's being um, thought of as some sort of business that needs to turn a profit is absolutely ridiculous. We don't think of any other government agency um, as something that needs to have a profitable business model. The only the, the only the social programs that benefit them are the programs that they want to keep in place, right? Not just mailing votes, but benefits for elderly people, social security benefits, people who are on food stamps, people who have medical stuff that that they tend to. There are people who, I mean, you can be privileged enough where you your whole life is online and you can do everything digitally. But there's a great number of, of people in America who have to depend on the post office for basic necessities and survival. And so only people who, uh, you know, the talk about socialism and communism in this country, how it's always being, you know, it's being poked at people just to scare them because of what happens in places like Venezuela and China and Cuba, but we all know that in America, we have a lot of socialist programs, but these programs are only here to benefit these people. Our taxpayer dollars fund the salaries of people who send their kids to the better schools, have the best health care. And while we struggle and, 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 and wonder where our funds are being misappropriated to. So when you see someone like this in the post office saying this is because they're not paying, they're not taking, they're not thinking about a lot of those people who actually vote for Donald Trump, who are poor and don't have resources and, and have to wait on things um, from the post office. Unfortunately, many of those people are don't have the education because they also are, are in areas where their education system suck. Because again, those programs don't matter because Ivanka gets to go to an Ivy League school and Eric, even though he looks confused all the time, can go to a good school. So here we sit here and 
talk about these social programs, but these social programs are benefit who? But poor people, marginalized people, average people who don't have trust funds. So of course they want to do away with it and make profit for it. Like they do everything else while the people who don't have jobs and are worried about getting evicted are funding and lacing the pockets of the people who are selling us vitamins and all the things they scare us and telling us that we need right now because of this pandemic. And the great big circle of BS continues to go round and round while those of us at the bottom keeps keeps struggling. And then they wonder why people say that one day the poor will eat the rich. You know, there's never any call to dismantle the Federal Reserve, which printed literally trillions of dollars during the pandemic and handed it over to banks and corporations. I mean, when it comes to that kind of cash giveaway, there's never any call to dismantle it or to stop it. But when it comes to the crumbs that the American people are fighting for because they just need something to survive, oh, then then we talk about dismantling it. We talk about about the um, cost effectiveness of the pro- of the agency, and and make no mistake, okay? Yes, Republicans right now absolutely uh, want to dismantle the post office uh, because there are political reasons to do so. There's a way of uh, disenfranchising voters during a pandemic by making it increasingly difficult for people to vote by mail. Um, but in the past, during the Obama era, there were plenty of you know Democratic lawmakers who wanted to defund the post office, who thought that it needed to be privatized. Kevin Drum who's um, a liberal uh, writer in the media, still thinks it's a good idea to privatize the post office. It's absolutely disgusting. Matty Glacius back in 2012, okay, was in favor of privatizing the post office. So uh, you know, now all of a sudden the chickens came home to roost and they're like, oh, this isn't so good, this is not a good idea. Of course it's not a good idea. This is a government agency that provides a fundamental important service, not just to Americans living in big cities, but Americans living in rural areas where delivery services, privatized delivery services, refuse to deliver anything because it's too costly for them. So let's just keep that in mind. And the the post office is expected to fund pensions 75 years in advance. That was something that was implemented by the Bush administration to make it increasingly difficult for the post office to to stay afloat. Want to win a free electric scooter? Well, our partners at Aspiration and Zoom Electric are making it possible. All you have to do is head to tyt.com slash green summer for your chance to win.